Hey everybody, it's GomletX, and welcome to the Wilds of Eldraine Arena Open Day 2, Draft Number 2. This is going to be a best of three Wilds of Eldraine draft with very, very high prizes on the line. We went 3-1 and one in the Arena Open Day 2, Draft Number 1, meaning that if we lose a single round in this draft, then we will be out of the event, but if we can potentially win a couple rounds before we get a loss, we could be leaving this event with actual cash money prizes. So very high stakes, very competitive event. I'm just happy to have made it at least this far, as you can absolutely scrub out of day one. You can also just lose the first draft of day two, but we managed to get this far. Hopefully we can make it just a little bit farther, but without further ado, let's go ahead and open up our packs and see where the cards take us today. All right, and here we are for pack one, pick one with several pretty great options. The Princess Takes Flight is great with ways to bargain it away or turn it back to your hand. Ash Party Crasher is great for red-white aggro with that celebration trigger being pretty consistent. Sir Armont is solid in green-white. I think Ash is the strongest card individually, but also the most restrictive. If we get cut off of red or white, we're not going to be able to play Ash very well. Um, Princess Takes Flight, probably the strongest card that's less restrictive but even that is pretty restrictive we have to get heavy into white to find cards like stockpiling celebrant to pick it up put it back in our hand or find a lot of bargain cards for it i think i'm just gonna start ash here but i feel like no matter what i take out of pack one there's a good chance we could get cut off of it between princess takes flight ash and sir armont which are just the three strongest cards in here by a lot all of these a bit narrow a bit uh a bit easy to get cut off of Princess Takes Flight by a little bit is the more flexible card, but because you have to put in work to get it to actually work, it's still not the most flexible card anyway, so I'd rather just take the strongest card, which is the Ash there. For pack one, pick two. Nothing for Red White to follow it up unless we really force it with an Archon's Glory. There's a couple great green cards, Hamlet Glutton being the really important, really premium card for the color. Ruby being quite good in red-green, but a lot more restrictive, since the Hamlet Glutton fits into any green deck. We also have Graceful Takedown to give green a little bit of removal, or Root Rider Fawn to ramp up into the Glutton, but Hamlet Glutton itself is certainly the least replaceable great green card, and since there aren't any great options to just go with Ash, Grabby Giant would be fine, Archon Glory would be fine. I'm actually going to take Hamlet Glutton here, Speculate towards the green with the most important card for any green deck, which is the Glutton. For pack one, pick three, we are seeing a Greta Sweet Tooth Scourge now. The three mana, three, three makes a food when it hits the board, even if Greta dies. So you get some amount of value there. If Greta doesn't die, you start turning all your food tokens into card draw or plus one, plus one counters, which is excellent. Not very high on Grave Pact, a very restrictive mana cost that requires additional work after resolving to get going. It can take over game and do some absurd things, but it's quite slow and restrictive. I would rather take the Greta here, I think. Not very high on Tempest Heart. Genealogist is fine, but we're definitely not taking Genealogist over Greta. And we're seeing nothing for Red White, so probably off the Ash Train here and on to the Greta Town. Pack 1, pick 4. Great stuff for green-black. We see a Stormkeld Vanguard here, which gives us main deckable artifact and enchantment hate, as well as another great 6-drop to try to ramp into if we can find the ramp pieces. Again, there are no good red or white cards. Dragon Mantle's close, but Savior the Sleeping really doesn't do anything. If we want to play it super open, we can take an Edge Wall in, which is basically a better version of Evolving Wilds. It's an Evolving Wilds that we can sacrifice later to pick up an adventure if we need to. But I think we're on Stormkeld and start trying to cut some green off. Pack 1, pick 5. Nice late Root Rider Fawn for us, and that's going to be a great card to help ramp into Stormkeld Vanguard and Hamlet Glutton. Works really well with the path we're trying to take with big green ramp dorks. We are seeing a stockpiling celebrant for whites. This is the first time we've actually seen a premium red or white common. Five picks in, so it doesn't feel like the Ash Train's really working, but that is a card for the Ash deck. Yeah, I think Root Rider's the best card in the pack. Werefox isn't that far off. Spell Stutter's probably in the top three. Actually, it's probably Fawn, then Celebrant, then Werefox top three. Spell Stutter's like fourth best. Then maybe Bowls of Porridge. Yeah, I think we're in a good spot in green, potentially. It is still very early. People during pack one can move around a lot and swap their colors on you 
just on a dime, so you never know for sure, but I am enjoying our spot in general. I'm not super duper high on Beanstalk Worm. There are some four damage removal spells at common, like Cut In. Firebolt's also kind of easy to get up to four damage, and uh, this doesn't have any additional impact. Hamlet Glutton really soaks up the five drop slot for me, where if you have the tools in your deck to bargain away, the food tokens, the rat tokens, whatever, it's just such a better five drop than Beanstalk Worm. So I don't take that card super highly. I could still take it here to cut people off green, but I think with Greta in the deck, I'd rather take a back for seconds as a really great late game recursion spell with enough bargain fodder. All right, pick seven. We see a graceful takedown still in here. That's very lovely to see trying to be in green. There's also still a cooped up, but we want to cut people off green and get an excellent removal spell no matter how our deck ends up being. We've only got the two black cards, but a lot of green, so we'll take the green over the black card. Like Scream Puff here, there'll be a fine addition, but again, potentially better five drops in green than black with cards like Hamlet Glutton. Let's take our graceful takedown, get a removal spell for green. Go on from there. We now have a Not Dead After All or a Screen Puff. Not a super big fan of either of these. For Green Black specifically. I think I like Screen Puff a little better. And there's no chance we play any of the other cards. Maybe we get pushed to Blue Green Ramp instead, where Gatekeeper gives us an adventure to slow down the aggro decks and also a big six drop to play. I should take Gatekeeper over Screen Puff here, maybe. Yeah. Now, Fell Horseman, good for a long game. We did not get... Actually, I don't remember if we had Root Rider Fawn in our opening pack, or that was pick two. If we don't see a Root Rider Fawn pick ten, then we didn't wheel it, but that's also not a super likely card to wheel in any draft pod. Yeah, I mean, this pack is devoid of playables. None of these cards are good anyway, so we'll take the somewhat on-color card. Okay, Archon's Glory was the only good white card. Candy Trail's fine. Crystal Grotto's fine, too. Could get us splashing in some adventures. Actually take the Crystal Grotto this time around. Still a Tempest Heart in there. That's okay. Spider Food for the sideboard might be better, though. Probably is pretty low on the Tempest Heart, because it's quite bad without triggering a single time. Could just take Wiz Wicked Visitor just to have two drops on curve, also. Could be important. I'll actually take Visitor over the Spider Food. Take Verdant Outrider, cut people off green. Nature's Will to cut people off green. Although nobody should be playing that. See how pack two goes for us. A complete miss for the opening pack, unfortunately. Although this is kind of a miss for everybody, so this is just a really big bummer of a pack to open up. So we've got... Princess takes flight for white, maybe. Archive Dragon for blue, and that's practically the whole pack. Genealogist and Brave the Wilds are borderline playables for green. Those are the cards we're going to take here. We need a lot of two drops to go with Genealogist, but we have them. It's a solid three. Brave the Wilds can help us splash in some stuff if we want, which is interesting. Also maybe help us cut a land as well. And that instead... Yeah, it's definitely one of these two. Not super excited about first picking either. I'll just get the curve really going here and grab a genealogist. Pack two, pick two. There's a Rankle's Prank, which did help us a lot during our arena open day one, but it's a lot better in decks that can make a lot of exp um, expendable little creatures like rat tokens and stuff to uh, consistently do that part. Land tax is interesting. I'm probably pretty good. I don't know if it's worth the Crystal Grotto splash towards it. I think we're just supposed to take the excellent instant speed removal of Taken by Nightmares here. Yeah, let's just take a Taken by Nightmares. All right, now we have a Shatter the Oath. Bit slow, bit expensive, but great removal nonetheless. Could actually splash an Ingenious Prodigy pretty reasonably. We just need one blue mana. We've got Root Rider Fawn and Crystal Grotto already. Actually, this is so splashable, we take it over Shatter the Oath. Because it only needs a single blue, it's just an X mana XX that draws us some extra cards. Yeah. That's a thing, actually. Splash that in. Treat it as a, a top end card. Uh, Prophetic Prism gets us some more fixing. 
but I'm a very big fan of Sweet Tooth Witch, giving us bargain fodder to more consistently cast Hamlet Gluttons on 5, as well as just being a very solid 3-drop for this kind of archetype. Furman's a great 3-drop as well, giving us bargain fodder, but it's a smaller creature up front, and we're not going to be playing a super duper high creature count that's going to get a bunch of plus and plus of counters on this. This being better in red, black, black, white, which being better in green, black. We're going to take this here. Have been real impressed by Titanic growths lately, so if we wheel that, I'd be super happy. And Shepard is definitely a sideboard option if we pick that up, but I'm going to get the Witch. Really need to make sure you have the bargain fodder to get the Gluttons down turn five. And this also ups our food count for Greta. Speaking of upping that bargain count, Conceited Witch helps with that, giving us a Wicked Roll. Definitely don't want another 5-drop Beanstalk Worm, or the Witch Stalker is also pretty unimpressive. Could take an Iron Crag for ramping, but I'd rather have more Root Rider Fawns if we can find those. Uh, another Witch Stalker, not excited about it, but you need to be blocking with some 2-drops against potential aggro in this format, and it's the only on-color card, unless I want to splash in Threadbind Cleek, which is possible. Again, two pieces of fixing right now. Doesn't feel great for that, though. Let's grab a Witch Stalker. Another Sweet Tooth Witch I'm very happy to see. Slam dunk that. Um, really doubt I'm playing Grim Search, but... I guess... I don't know. Grim Search or Spire... We take Grim Search. If we open up like a Gruff Triplets or something, we could play it just to dig into our bombs. It's a possibility. Grab a 2 4 just to block eventually. Keep us alive. I think it's probably better than Sting Blade Assassin in this deck. Lots of ways to clear out one toughness creatures that are brutal, like Rat Out and um, Flick a Coin and stuff. I don't think Sky Beast Tracker is good either, but. We need to get 23 non-land cards before we can really start cutting stuff. I'm not going to do Knight of the Sweet's Revenge. Get another 2 mana 2-2. Two, two. Alright, pack 3. What you got for us? Very average, very kind of consistent deck here. We've got removal, we've got a curve, we've got some top end. A little bit of everything. Looking for some bomb power, and we just completely miss on the packs that we open. So gross. Alright. Open flat out nothing every pack, I guess. We just take a rat out here. We do not have enough roll tokens to try to do the Ashiox Reaper thing. That's just going to be a 4 mana 3-3. Three, three. We've got two roll tokens in this deck. Yeah, that's pretty terrible. Rat out it is. What a bummer, yeah. Completely just hosed. No good cards in our main two colors, pack two or pack three. In the packs we open, we have to just get past the goodies. We do get past the goodies, though. We've got a Red Tooth Vanguard here to up the two drop count, and this will sometimes be very recursive when we randomly get a roll every now and then. I do like the Were Fox, I do like the Shatter the Oath, but I think upping the 2-drop count with something actually pretty premium is the pick here. It's got that one toughness, but it gets around the usual issue by being recursive, so even if they do rat out, you still get value over time. Uh, I hate seeing both of these in the same pack, Gingerbread Hunter and Hamlet Glutton. Could I just have opened one of these in my pack instead of clumping up Hamlet Glutton, Gingerbread Hunter, and Fairy Fencing into this pack? Oh, RNGesus. We gotta take Gingerbread Hunter. This thing's absurd. It's a miniature removal spell and a miniature version of Hamlet Glutton, all off of one card, so it's a pretty big two for one. Five, five, and a food, as well as a way to kill a creature with Puny Snack. Gingerbread Hunter is incredible and helped us uh, make it to day two draft two, so we're certainly gonna pick it highly for that. And that's another five drop for us. Now we have Elvish Archivist, which is interesting. We've got food tokens hitting the board every now and then. We've got roll tokens hitting the board every now and then. So this will sometimes get some counters and sometimes draw some cards. Probably do take that over the Shatter the Oath. That is the best other card to take. Let's take the Archivist. Another one toughness card, but the upside is really there on that one. Now we take a Taken by Nightmares for excellent removal. 
little expensive. We would prefer to just have a bunch of candy grapples, the two mana removal spell, but the fact that this can kill anything is pretty nice. Okay, big fan of royal treatment to protect our big creatures as a hexproof trick. It also leaves a permanent royal token on the board to bargain away or to trigger anything that cares about enchantments. So that is quite a nice card. Definitely better than Candy Trail, Ego Drain, Grim Surge, Admirer, or Ground Seal. So easy pick there. And for pack three, pick seven, Vine Stock helping Splash in the Prodigy is very cool. We could absolutely just take a Hopeless Nightmare, but I think Vine Stock is. Pretty helpful for the Prodigy, and if we manage to hit a Crystal Grotto or a Root Rider Fawn or anything, then we can also just animate it and attack with it. So that is pretty spicy to open up the perfect duel. All right, now we can take a Titanic Growth if I want to play around with that again. We're not splashing in any of these blue cards. And get a Spider Food for the sideboard here. Get a Werefox for the main deck. Let's go. We need some four drops on this curve, and I like the guard change adventure for some extra potential value there. It's another little aura to put in our deck with Elvish Archivist. Take an admirer that I will just straight up not play. Most likely. Maybe there's some matchup I really need one mana one ones. Definitely not trying to deny to Sweet's Revenge, so we'll take another admirer. Maybe a very specific matchup. We sideboard around with those. And I think I take a Scream Puff over another Witch Stalker. I don't know if I'll be playing it, but it's possible. All right, I'm pretty happy with this. Very, very similar in power level to our Day 2 Draft 1 deck. Very similar in power level to most Arena Open Day 2 decks we end up with. Didn't get any bombs. Which is a thing. I guess Prodigy sort of counts. Yeah, that counts. That counts, because if they don't deal with it, it's going to draw us a lot of cards and uh, and really close out the game, so spicy for that, for sure. I don't think there's anything in the sideboard really worth main decking, so we get to cut four cards here. Again, I could play Grim Search if I'm just wanting, wanting to dig into Prodigy, but I don't think so. I think we are um, grinding out a game with whatever we manage to draw into, generally, regardless. 19 creatures, 8 non-creatures. So cut a few creatures, maybe one non-creature here, maybe like the Porridge and some creatures. It's probably going to be the play. Cut the Porridge, maybe a one drop or two, mostly. Maybe the Tracker here. Bring things in for specific matchups. This is another 5 drop. Yeah. Four cuts, I think, Porridge for the non-creature, one of these Wicked Visitors, uh, a Tracker, that's one cut to go. And now I'll let Arena lag out on the final cut, as we could cut Titanic Growth because we've got Royal Treatment anyway. And... We have Gingerbread Hunter kind of upping the non-creature count, giving us another little cheap uh, removal spell. Vanguard sort of does. It's artifact or enchantment hate. So maybe the adventures help the non-creature count. Yeah, that's where we want to cut a non-creature over creature here at 17. I've won so many games, though, just randomly off Titanic Crow. <laughs> draft 2, number 1. Or day 2, draft number 1. I don't think I can justify cutting any of our other commons, though. Maybe Rat Out versus Titanic Growth really depends on the matchup. I like keeping as many of these two drops in the Rat Out to have great defenses early, because we have great late-game plays if we can survive long. So if we're in a grindier matchup, I think our deck's already good. If we're in a more aggressive matchup, I think having the Rat Out, keeping these some of these mediocre two drops to get more blocks in, is where we want to be. So I think we cut Titanic Growth and just try to grind it out, resolving the big creatures later. And let's make sure our mana base is good. No hand shuffler or hand smoother in best of three. 11 black cards, 12 green, 1 blue. I think because of Root Rider Fawn, 
And Crystal Grotto and Vine Stock. We already have three blue sources. I think I would rather just not have any exclusively blue sources in this deck and up that green count. For the Fawn, got a couple double black cards. Um, this is nine green sources, seven black. For the 11 12 split. Do we go 8 8 instead? I don't think so because Fawn's ability to fix the mana a little. It's kind of the only fixing there, though. I feel like a Brave the Wilds over a Genealogist would have actually just improved this deck, unfortunately, in the end, since we did end up picking up a Prodigy to splash in. I feel like our deck is still pretty strong without the Prodigy, though, so we could also just go for the super consistent mana of not dirtling with Prodigy. Since I don't have any Brave the Wilds or Prophetic Prisms or anything. No massive card draw engine in the deck anymore, but we still have good two-for-one value plays like Back for Seconds, Gingerbread Hunter killing something and hitting the board. You know, big beef to stabilize like Hamlet, Glutton, and Vanguard. Like, we still have ways to win without the Prodigy. So there's an alternate choice here of cutting a Prodigy, putting in... Putting the Porridge back in or something or the Titanic growth back in, and just being green-black and having consistent mana. Really doesn't feel like the Prodigy Splash is necessary for a deck to have win conditions and ways to close things out. And then we still have access to the Prodigy Flash or Splash if it feels like a matchup where we're not winning the late game somehow, if they are a grindier green-based deck instead of a more aggressive red-based deck in this format. We do have that backup plan to always side into, so I feel like either way we start it, we could be fine here. And uh, in just a two-color deck, I don't love Crystal Grotto. So we could even go 18 lands, go 9-9, nine, nine, but we could go 8-9 uh, here and put back in the Titanic Growth as the uh, starter build. I think I like that. And we have the backup Blue Splash for those grind your late game matchups. Yep. We got some one mana one ones with ward and stuff for really aggressive matchups where we need more one drops and two drops. We got a wicked visitor throw in there too. Porridge can maybe even help if they have a lot of two toughness stuff. I think I like the sideboard options a lot, but I'm cool with this. As a nice generic main deck to start things off and I think we can call it a deck here. All right, here's a look at our final deck list for today. We are on another green-black mid-range food pile thing. Bunch of two-for-one cards, cards that are making multiple rectangles off of one card, like Sweet Tooth Witch here that hits the board and makes a food. Greta hits the board and makes a food and uses those food tokens to draw cards. Genealogist can buff another creature. Any of our role production could be drawing us cards off of Elvish Archivist. So there's tons of little miniature two-for-ones like that that can just stack up over the course of a long game into ending up with us with a lead. Usually you get to the point where everybody has spent all their cards, but you come out of the rubble with a 5-5 five, five, or a 6-6 six, six left over while your opponent has nothing. And that is the kind of war of attrition these green-black mid-range decks are great at in this format. A little bit of removal with Taken by Nightmares, Rat Outs, and Graceful Takedown. Some Graveyard Recursion with Back for Seconds and Fell Horseman. Some Protection with Royal Treatment and Titanic Growth that both double as combat tricks to beat our opponent down. Maybe get the last few points of damage in. And uh, yeah, Great Curve with a ton of 2 drops and 3 drops to not die to aggro. And some Big Beef to close out the game in the end. Everything you really want in this archetype except for bomb level rares i guess archivist is as close as we've got here maybe this will play pretty well get some counters when we're making food get some cards when we're making rolls it'll probably be very impressive and it's going to be a lightning rod for our opponent's early removal spells so we do have that this time around so that is definitely worth noting but certainly no absolute mvp just easy bake victory cards like gruff triplets but we do have quite a solid deck today, and I'm very excited to see how it does. Hopefully, we get some good draws, make some good plays, and maybe win a couple games as we head into the gameplay of the Arena Open Day 2, Draft Number 2. Here we are on the play for Game 1. feel like this has to be a keep with the good mana. Nothing until Turn 3, but the Rat Out can help against more 
aggressive decks. Start with the Swamp Pass from here. Our opponent starts with Fairy Dream Thief. Perfect rat out target. We'll do that after they surveil, so they don't have the information that we're just going to kill the Dream Thief. They're going to keep the card on top. Let's rat out the Thief. They'll still be able to draw a card off of it later from the grave, so they do still get some value from it as well. Let's poke in for one. Pass from there. Barrow Naughty for a 1-3 like to trade a Titanic Growth into the Barrow Naughty. I don't think I would right now when I can just expand the board state with a Sweet Tooth Witch, so let's drop that and pass. Don't want to bluff attack here, because if I get caught having to cast Titanic Growth instead of playing a Witch, that'll be real bad. A really bad use of my mana for the turn. Okay, they'll attack with the Naughty. I've got a turn 5 Hamlet Glutton if I cast Root Rider Fawn this turn, so the turn's going to be Root Rider Fawn, maybe Fell Horseman. Um, so, no Titanic Growth, but I'm very open to using my Graveyard Recursion. Perfect. And this is going to be the perfect use of the mana. We're going to get our 1-3 down. We're going to get our Graveyard Recursion spent. Now we are locked into casting a Hamlet Glutton turn 5 if they don't kill a Root Rider Fawn. Three mana up from our opponent. They can certainly have a counter spell in blue black, like Spell Stutter. Counter unless I pay three. That would be the worst thing for them to have for me if they have a Candy Grapple or a Feed the Cauldron style removal spell. It's not so bad. Better to play a three drop and a two drop here than it is to cast the Glutton to play around the counter. I think we do. They're blue-black with a Barrow Naughty and a Fairy Dream Thief, so we have to respect the possibility of Spell Stutter here. And instead, we can still make the most of five mana playing two creatures for the turn. So let's do that. Drop a Visitor, recast a Witch. Yep. Pass from there. Still not wanting to spend a Titanic Growth right now. And since they didn't spend anything, they can spend all their mana on the Dream Thief card draw, which is pretty good for them. Another Dream Thief. They've got that one and a blue up. Also, the Barrow Naughty has lifelink, which is a big deal. Okay, so they can counter unless I pay four now, so they can counter Titanic Growth even, which is pretty gross. But I feel like Titanic Growth and Red Tooth Vanguard is the best use of the mana for the turn. They don't have the power on board to kill Root Rider Fawn. They could double block, try to kill Witch or Visitor, which is fine. Yeah. They don't have the power to kill Fawn, so I believe we just send in the team. They could have a Candy Grapple here, but if they have Candy Grapple, they're already killing anything they want. Same with if they have the Scheming thing. Okay, so I'm going to put the Fairy Dream Thief up front, because if they counter Titanic Growth, I'll still kill something here. Um, but if I put it the other way and they counter Titanic Growth, I kill nothing and lose visitors. So we order like this, then we attempt the Titanic Growth. And this may draw a Candy Grapple or a Spell Stutter from them. Nothing. Nothing yet, I should say. Nothing at all, okay. Just a food to eat. Just a food to eat it is. Loving our board state. Once they hit five mana, they could have the rare board wipe in black. Exile cards from the grave. They've got four creatures in there, so they can give everything minus four, minus four, which still wouldn't kill a Hamlet Glutton, so I think we just try to cast the Hamlet Glutton now. Come to the cold. Yeah, they've tapped out of the blue. And even if they have the board wipe, they don't kill the glutton, so we definitely resolve that. Rat out the vanguard. Yeah, it's pretty good.
Ooh, curse roll on the glutton, but our adventure off of Stormkeld Vanguard could be exceptional. We could also get got here if they have candy grapple now. We know they didn't have candy grapple earlier. They definitely would have used that instead of eating a food. But if they've drawn it by now and they candy grapple my glutton in response to me trying to kill the cursed roll, I will lose my glutton and my 6-7, which is a really bad time for me. I think it's reasonable to still just play a 3-3 for now while it's holding for them here. I mean, if they have the rare, that's RIP. Disdainful Stroke? So we definitely keep that in mind for next game. Disdainful Stroke. Rat out. For some instance. Got Italian. That's a different rare that's not as bad. Succumb to the cold. I guess we could play around. But uh not something that like destroys us at the wrong time. Okay, now they just have a black up. If they have another rat out, then I'm doomed, but the odds of that are kinda low. It's just one specific black card that could work here. I guess they could have rat out or fairy fencing, since Talion is a fairy. So I could actually instead exile Talion first and then try to save Hamlet Glutton. Because this way they could only have Rat out. Fairy Fencing wouldn't work. Because Fairy Fencing would be minus zero, minus zero. If they have another Rat out, they have another Rat out. And that's absolutely disgusting. There's a transmuter. Block witch, take two, three, four, five, six. Go to two life here. I can't believe they just had a second red out. They only have one blocker. There's a second blocker. Please, no fairy for lifelink. No fairy for lifelink. Oh, God. Not like this, Arena. Whoa. Just trying to skip through my turn with the space bar. They have one fairy on board, so I need to play a land to play around Spell Stutter. the other one. Opponent chooses to go to one here. Another succumb to the cold, perhaps? Kills them on board. I think it's better to guard change in response to this than it is on blocks. Because they have enough toughness to go this here, this here, or really anywhere they do blocks. Dead on board. 
Ooh, that was so much closer than it had to be. They have three rat out minimum. We really need to worry about that. Because we got the first rat out out of their hand, and then we were in a position where it's like, well, this is going to be incredible against anything except exactly a second rat out. In similar lines in the future, we have to play around another rat out because they have at least three in the deck. That is really, really important. Lots of instants to consider. Another thing that we should consider is their Conceited Witch with the Price of Beauty Adventure. If we have instant speed removal to hold up, it would be decent to do so, just in case they are trying to put rolls onto their creatures. So there are definitely things to keep in mind with how we want to play future games in this round. The biggest one definitely being Rat Out. Okay. Don't think we're splashing in the blue here. Don't really think we're changing much. I think Rat Out is solid against them with the multiple fairy dream thieves. Also, just as a combat trick sometimes is fine. I really like Royal Treatment against them, and I think Titanic Growth is also fine. Anything that looks terrible against them? Archivist is certainly awkward because of all of their Rat Outs, but in the right position still good vanguard because of the graveyard recursion i think is still fine but triple rat out is a thing so maybe we just play a two mana two two over the um red tooth vanguard even it's honestly potentially worth a consideration with them on triple rat out maybe even a spider food actually comes into the deck with all the flyers they have. I think we actually do put spider food in here. Kills Talion. As well as all their 1-3s and stuff like that. Put a spider food in instead of... One toughness dork. Maybe instead of vanguard is fine. Witch stalker actually also looks pretty bad in here. Because all their attacks are going to be in the sky. So we'll actually play spider food over our 2-3 defender on the ground. We don't need many blockers on the ground. Most of the good cards they've cast were flyers. Well, opponent has taken a mulligan. We're on the draw. Naturally up a card because of the mulligan, plus naturally up a card from drawing first. I think we can afford to keep a five lander. It's certainly awkward, but... Absolutely draw goodies here. Barrow Naughty is the first play. Land, land for our first draws. Pretty awful, but now we only have a 32% chance of lands from here on out. According to Untapped. Hopeless Nightmare. Oh god, what am I going to discard? Yeah, Red Tooth Vanguard. The turn after I had to discard a card. When I drop this down, they are going to rat me out hard. Play a genealogist because of the rat out possibilities. I still don't think so because of the power level of getting a roll onto the vanguard to save it from rat outs in the future. We make it so if they don't immediately have rat out in hand, we stop it by playing genealogist. Plus, if I draw any other creatures, playing genealogist and getting a roll onto the board picks up the vanguard. That is not a rat out. They're going to get the scry 2, draw a card off stopgap, that's fine. Not under much pressure life total wise, just taking one. Gingerbread Hunter. Very solid card, but it doesn't do too much here. Play the Vanguard, auto pass. We know they don't have rat outs in hand unless they top decked. Talion's the play, spider food for sure is our play. Plus the Wicked Visitor draw is perfect. Can't believe we're not getting got by Rat Out still. Not a great draw for our opponent against the Vanguard here. But if they've drawn it now, I've got the Genealogist. They just bitter chill it. Spend a full-on removal spell on a card that could have been killed by one of their three copies of Rat Out. We will take that. 
happily. One blue mana up is not going to be enough to counter anything here, so we can afford to go ahead and Cuny Snack the Dream Thief without worrying about counters. That's going to get rid of the Barrow Naughty's lifelink. Get the Visitor attacking super freely for three. I mean, it's already a free attack, but I like clearing out the lifelink on the Naughty. Getting ready to cast a Gingerbread Hunter for a 5 5. Alright, tap out to uh, draw a card off Dream Thief. Two mana up now. They could have a uh, counter a uh, mana value 4 kind of thing here. Um, no kills on the blocks here, so we just send in. And then uh, get Disdainful Stroked, I guess. Well, I can kill Baronati with Royal Treatment, and they can't counter that with Disdainful Stroke, so it's kind of like got him. Bazinga. And now... Get stroked, nerd. Yeah, I don't have anything better to do. I could just hold up Taken by Nightmares in case they play a creature, but if they play a creature, they're going to play it and hold up Stroke. Get stroked, nerd, which is fine. We still have six power on board against a 12 life total opponent. We just exile their next blocker, hit them for six, kill them in two swings. Oh, <laughs> there's that Conceited Witch we were uh, thinking of playing around, but then they would have uh, stroked the Taken by Nightmares anyway. Um, Alright, so now we take those Nightmares and Scry 2, hit for 6. Grab a Sweet Tooth Witch, that's an extra um, boatload of damage with two food tokens. One from Witch and one already on board. Big stuff. There's a transmuter for a 3-4 blocker, but which on top is going to kill them here? Okay, if they have two blockers, it's not going to kill them. Hmm. Block the 3-3, three, three, block the 3-4. Take one from the wicked roll. Weird little ruling thing to keep in mind. If you have a creature that says... Whenever enchantment goes to the graveyard from the battlefield, each opponent loses a life, and it dies at the same time as your aura, you don't do the Wicked Visitor damage. Because creatures... In the grand scheme of things, if things die at the same time, quote-unquote, creatures actually die before enchantments. I learned this the hard way. I thought it was going to work the same as if you board wipe with something that says whenever a creature dies, somebody loses a life. When that happens, the creature sees all the other creatures die and you hit them. Doesn't work that way with enchantments. The creature doesn't see the enchantment die. So, important to keep in mind. Um, so they're going to play a 2-3 blocker after this. So I attack both. They kill Wicked Visitor. We don't deal a damage to them, but we kill the Sprite. Then they have two blockers up against two attackers. I don't think attacks are worth it. I think we just play Witch and get ready to double shoot them. And we have to find something to break through. Attacking both basically trades Wicked Visitor for Sprite, which doesn't feel great. We top decked another creature, and it's cheap enough to instantly cast, so they've definitely got blocks, but all I have to do is top deck a food. Oh, I was gonna say, that's a really bold attack. Spend all my mana here, I still have plenty of other cards to bargain away, and this makes it so no matter how expensive the food card that I draw is, I can still cast it. Horseman, I think, gets us there? Yep, because Gingerbread Hunter. Horseman certainly gets us there. Do I puny snack, or do I just play the gingerbread hunter? If I play the gingerbread hunter, we know we're killing them with witch next turn, but even if I puny snack, I know I'm killing them with witch next turn, and this plays better against them drawing removal for the sweet tooth witch, so I think we actually just puny snack. Do I attack then snack? I think I just pre-combat attack and pass, or pre-combat snack and pass from there. Next turn, we have the mana to play Hunter and throw the food. So, 
we just do that. It's the counter spell top deck. That's the one card that would play better, yeah. Well, Wicked Visitor still gets us there, right? Thanks to drawing into Conceited Witch. We can make a roll die so that they go to one and then attack him with Genealogist, and if they kill it, they die because of Wicked Visitor's trigger. Put them to one here, swap and rolls out. But then they just bounce three fours. They just choose to bounce three fours. It's a good place to attack with everybody now that I make them bounce three fours. No, because then they kill they kill visitor with the three four, and uh, trump here trade here, and that's not good. Yeah, we pass. We're up two creatures that we can cast next turn. We play it a little slow here. Okay, lock down the Visitor. That's fine, because again, the way it works is if Visitor dies while it's enchanted with an aura, it doesn't ping. It doesn't see it. Rat out's the draw. I can't rat out my own vanguard to kill them, because this is not an enchantment we control, it's an enchantment they control. So we just play Witch Horseman. Rat out a creature next turn. Oh, you know what I could have done? I could have attacked with Genealogist and then rat out my Genealogist after they block with 3-4. That was better. But they miss, so they're already done on board because of Menace. And I have one more creature than them. All right, missed lethal there. Could have attacked with Genealogist. They block with a 3-4, we rat out our own Genealogist. I believe rat out can do that. Yeah, you can target your own creature. Then Genealogist dies, the Wicked Roll hits them and the Visitor hits them. But yes, very, very, very important to note and could have completely changed the outcome of that game. If I didn't know that the Visitor doesn't ping our opponent when it dies with an aura on it, then we might have Trump attacked with Visitor at some point, lost that ability for Drain, and been down a creature, and could have been a horrible, horrible time. That would have been if I didn't know that, and my opponent did know that. So, really, really important thing to keep in mind. I lost one of my Arena Open Day 1 Seals because of that interaction, where I'd attacked in with a Wicked Visitor, um, with a Wicked Roll on it, and my opponent lost one life, because Wicked Visitor didn't trigger when its aura died. Um, because they died at the same time, it didn't see the enchantment die, because enchantments die after the creatures, I guess. And uh, yeah, it was rough. It was rough. So really important to keep that in mind. But overall, an incredible, incredible matchup for us with some really good draws throughout. Just very solid luck. Gives us the round one victory. And here's a look at our position now in day two draft number two. With one match win, we're guaranteed 15,000 gems as the reward, before I played the Arena Open day one at all, I had 50,000 gems. I'm down to 40,000 now after doing three entries and then winning 5,000. But now, if I win this, I'm all the way back up to 55,000 gems. So no matter what happens for this Arena Open run, we're up 5,000 gems. We're in the money. We're getting great value. We played a lot of fun magic, so excellent, excellent day of magic for me. Excellent couple days of videos for y'all if you enjoy these kinds of videos, and who knows, maybe we'll take it a little farther. One more win, and we're in the money. Try my absolute best, cross my fingers here, and head into round two of day two draft number two. Here we are for game one with a certainly awkward hand. If we keep this, we desperately need to draw a swamp, but drawing a swamp leads into Greta, Conceited Witch, back for second, some very powerful cards. We have eight swamps in the deck, and we're on the draw here. We know we're playing a Red Tooth Vanguard. Eight out of... Let's see, 24% of our cards are swamps, according to Untapped here. On average, takes four draw steps to get there. We have three draw steps till we really want it. If we get there in four draw steps, we're still happy. Definite risk here. Big, big risk here. 
we miss for not playing Magic, we're dying. It's right on that Razor's Edge. The double black card and the card that doesn't do anything till really late in the game. Cards that uh, kind of keep me from keeping this, but... If I hit one black source, we're so likely to have two creatures in Grave pretty early and an extra food token somewhere that back for seconds is actually still a pretty early game play. Face could absolutely explode here, but I'm going to go on the keep and immediately get rewarded. Sick luck here. Start with that swamp, pass from here. Opponents on mono blue for now with a turn two iron crag. We draw into the vanguard. Or sorry, we draw into the wicked visitor for another two drop. Could have played Wicked Visitor, so next turn I could play Vanguard and put a Wicked Roll on something. But I think I'm just going to tap out for a 3-drop Greta, turn 3. They have a Bitter Blossom? They found a Bitter Blossom off Picklock Prankster? Because it's a Tribal Enchantment Fairy. So Picklock Prankster can pick up Bitter Blossom. Oh. God. Well, that's... Uh, horrendous. Okay, well, this is gonna be a battle. I can tell you that. Trade into the Prankster, get it out of the way here. As soon as I get a roll on the board, we can reanimate the Vanguard. Well, not reanimate it, but put it back in our hand. Let's get Greta down on the empty board. They don't have a Black Source on board yet. Still no Black Source, so another Blue-Black Fairies matchup. Mono blue for now. There's the stopgap to slow down Greta and draw a card. Surprised they played the land before the stopgap, because if they top decked Swamp, they could have played it for turn there. Um, I guess it doesn't matter unless they had a one drop black card. Could only cast one spell here because I only have one black source. We just recast Greta. They only have one blue source up. Get another food. Do I even just put a counter on Greta? Make her a 4-4? Not against like a bunch of potential bounce and stuff like that. Let's keep the food for card draw and uh, bargain and life gain and all that. Quick study to draw to finding the swamp here. There's the swamp. Here's Bitter Blossom. And now we get to have a terrible time. Doesn't trigger till their upkeep at least. And we do have enchantment removal in this deck. But this is certainly a matchup for our food thingy. So I can cast Genealogist and pick up my Vanguard back to hand, or I can cast Genealogist and cast a Wicked Visitor just to get more power immediately on board, which I think is more impressive to me right now. So let's Genealogist and go for immediate power on board. Make Greta a 4-4, decline that, cast a Wicked Visitor, attack for 4, and we try to outrace the Bitter Blossom and use that life loss to our advantage to the best of our ability. Living Luck turn. Another card that the um, spider food is great against. Okay, five forests before the second swamp is really, really bad here. For conceded, which mainly is the problem. But Taken by Nightmares not being up here is also bad. Okay. Let's come to the cold just to slow us down. Very... Well, I would say very chill with me for the pun and everything, but... When they have a Bitter Blossom on board, that's really actually quite bad for me. Okay. Visitor gets blocked by Lectern. We don't damage anything, but Visitor's not blocking anything anyway, so... Threaten to kill Lectern. They don't care, which is fair. I feel like I'm just digging with Greta, honestly, for solutions to this problem we have right now. <laughs> That's the opposite of a solution. All right. Pass. Ah, she's pouring some oil on the fire there. Oh, 
Archive Dragon. All right. Once we get our second black source, we can just clear that out. But I'm pretty sure we're just getting bitter blossomed at this rate. Regardless. Oh, got to dig for that. That black source. Holy Lord. All right. Well, we're getting better blossomed hard. Nothing else to really say about it. They have 10 damage on board. Lectern makes it 11. They just kill me on the crackback. If they let this in. If they do that, I take 10 and survive the crackback. Still really unlikely to kill them, but... Uh-oh. Extra damage spell here? Sit the discard deal 2 to me? Stab wound? I think we gotta stop that if we have any chance of killing them. If they have nothing else in hand, and we can hexproof this and then draw a swamp to blow up the 1 1, then we win. Oh, you're too late, Stormkeld Vanguard. You're too late. They chump the 5 6. Four, five, six, seven, eight damage to them. I have to find a way to deal four more, which I can't do. I can kill some of our enchantments for Wicked Visitor, but not enough. I just needed Taken by Nightmares to kill them here. I guess I only need to do three extra damage. If we can find a way to kill... Hold up. I can put a Wicked Roll on one of my dorks, swapping out the Royal Roll. That'll have Wicked Visitor hit them for one. Um, and then because I have a Wicked Roll on board, I can blow up the Wicked Roll to hit them for another two. That's three extra damage, so they block there, take four, five, six, seven, eight, plus three extra damage is eleven. Bitter Blossom for the twelfth. If they have literally nothing, there is a very roundabout way to get there. They're at four. We now put a Wicked Roll onto something that already has a roll. Let's put it on the Scream Puff. Deal one. Decline that, it doesn't matter to this. Destroy the Wicked Roll to deal two. Bitter Blossom deals one. Oh... My god, I think I just did things that are inappropriate for you two, baby. All right. No double black, no problem. Obviously playing some more removal for Bitter Blossom, but maybe based on how that went, it's better to let them keep it. Let's grab that spider food. Loved how Wicked Visitor played. We might even put another in here for that, but we didn't see any rat outs from them. What did we see to play around? instance we just saw a counter spell that was it blow off steam but uh, we didn't see the fixing for that one damage spell so don't know that we play around that yet if they play a red source we do so let's keep track let's say blow off steam um 
Quick study is a thing they could hold up. We don't have to play around it, but keep in mind if Arena's holding for them and succumb to the cold. Very low on just straight removal. A lot of Johan's stopgap to consider. Stopgap times two. Okay. Definitely love spider food in here. We can kill a bitter blossom. We can also kill a 4 6 flyer or a 3 4 flyer. They do have a desperate parry as well. Keep track of for minus 4, minus 0. So put in a spider food. The only thing we saw that rat out kills is a fairy token from the um, bitter blossom. So I might actually cut rat out for uh, spider food and go real simple with the uh, swaps here. I think that is reasonable. Yep. Rat out for spider food. Get in there for game number two. Okay, this one, uh, as greedy as I am, as you saw from our first keep, uh, this one is... We're not guaranteed to do anything without hitting the forest, whereas at least with my other keep, we, we're playing a 2-mana 3-1 no matter what, so I think this time we have to just mulligan, and we're at the draw, on the draw at least as well. Make up for the mole. But yeah, nothing castable in the opener that time. This we can keep ditching a land. Can fawn as a land. Could even just ditch the fawn. Just go 2-mana 3-1, 3-mana 3-2. Autobots roll out. But on the draw here, I feel like we find another land. If we don't, we can slowly use Root Rider Fawn to play the Witch. We saw no rat outs from them yet, so I think Vanguard's a solid turn two play. Mono blue from our opponent again. Turn two hatching plans, perhaps? Maybe the uh, Picklock Prankster drawing an extra card. Hatching plans, sure is, and that's going to be great with all their bargain cards. And there's land three, and we are golden. So Vanguard into Witch is the line. Here comes Johan Stopgap. Put the Vanguard back, draw four. Get very far ahead in card advantage. No, they did not hit a bargain card for hatching plans yet, which I'm very cool with. Vanguard is smaller, but it can still, uh, it can still jam in. Let's get a witch down while they only have one blue up. Uh, probably fawn plus takedown next turn. Shoot something for four. There's the red source. They have the blow off steam mana. The prism as well. They definitely have the blow off steam mana. They also have bitter blossom. Uh, all right. We outraced it last time. Let's just do it again. Hit for six here. Hit for four and throw a food at them, and then kill every blocker with takedown and taken by nightmares. Transmuter can absolutely get taken down. Right. Any number of enchanted creatures you control, I can do it even if it's their enchantment on my creature. Oh no, I clicked the wrong button. Oh my god. Oh my god, that's so bad. <laughs> that's actually so bad. Um, one thing that could go really poorly for me is if I try to graceful takedown with the Vanguard and they have blow off steam in hand for their one red, uh, they kill the Vanguard in response and I only shoot transmuter for three. So we take in by nightmares here instead. They should be at two less life here. That's so bad for me. Don't believe we're attacking with Vanguard. Until I know I have a potential roll coming. Archive Dragon, tap out for that. We can take in by Nightmares tapping Fawn. Scry both to the bottom. Love to see that. We do hit the Vanguard for the Blossom. But I think I have to kill the Dragon first. Hold up. Yeah, Ward 2. We do want to target it. I've got the 2. Kill the fairy. 
I could also just cast Vanguard. The fairies can't block it, and it kills them in two swings. Maybe we don't even kill Bitter Blossom here. Ah, I hate that I clicked the wrong thing. I clicked the token instead of the witch. <laughs> I'm going to be tilted about that for a while, especially if I lose the game here. Click it on the wrong location on the screen, baby. That's what it's all about. Bolt. Don't bargain the plans away. Keep that bargain. For... Something in the upkeep? Oh, they just succumb here? God, now I need to top deck a land to play Vanguard. That's so awkward. Well, I've got no instants, but I can pretend I have them. Hey! All right, no removal and they're dead. Let's play it. If they don't have removal, we attack them with this once and Bitter Blossom kills them next turn. This is why I'm casting it instead of killing Bitter Blossom. There's the removal. Big yikes. Big, big yikes. Bitter Blossom still hits them a lot, and Vanguard still can't be blocked by anything but the Diminisher Witch. So we can still try to outrace it. Okay. If we lose this game, I'm pretty sure it's going to be because I clicked the wrong food button. They should be at three life right now. They've got a flick of coin as well as the blow off steam. Let's keep track of that. Sorry, Arena has a mode where you can have it keep playing audio while minimized, but every time you click outside of Arena, it cuts out the audio for half a second. So my apologies about that. That's me going to the notepad every time you hear that. I think we're going to lose because I clicked the wrong button. Lose $500 because I clicked the wrong button. I'm going to blow a gasket. Got another game after this, at least. So they'd be at three right now. They had to kill us. They would have to kill us in three turns. If they end up at two life, then yes, they would be dead. Just the prankster. Oh, there they go. They can bargain away Bitter Blossom, so they wouldn't be at two life. So at least it is looking like they would probably win anyway. If this comes down to that. They bargain the Bitter Blossom. They don't bargain the Bitter Blossom. I guess they don't have to because they're not at two, they're at four. But... We know that they would have had the bargain card to bargain away the Bitter Blossom to know that they don't die to that, uh, regardless. And we flood. No point in holding up mana to pay for a taxing counterspell, because it, if it's a taxing counterspell, it costs like 50 with all these fairies. They have to kill us in three attacks. They certainly can right now. Not if we draw into some food, maybe. Like a spider food or something. God dang. Alright, so here's where they would have had to bargain away the Bitter Blossom by now, but they'd still be alive because they had the bargain tool to sacrifice it. So don't have to see this as an arena misclick loss here because they could have sacked Blossom and still been in a very firm lead. Wicked Visitor. They just block with Lectern. I can't kill them because they just block with Lectern. If they didn't have Lectern on board, that would actually be a lethal draw. Maybe they won't see the line. Oh, I don't even control the enchantment. They control the enchantment, so it doesn't matter regardless. Yeah, they control the enchantment, so they're fine. We're just dead. All right. A 
really close. Would have been even closer had I correctly clicked with the food. But they would have won even if we clicked correctly. One thing that maybe would have went differently, we need to realize they have tons of cursed rolls to just dome our giant creatures, so I should have just bear downed on the Bitter Blossom and played a long game normally from there. Alright, maybe they won't draw Bitter Blossom game three and we just uh, annihilate. Probably the best bet. But if they do draw Bitter Blossom again, we are back on the race plan. Very happy with the main deck here. Don't think there's anything sideboard that's particularly excellent for this matchup. I'm going to reach creatures, whatever. We could play a giant spider, but... I think we just run it back. Game three. Even matchup here. On the play. Slower hand, but I don't think I can afford to mulligan. We have both colors. We hit lands and we're going crazy. We hit two drop creatures, we're going extra crazy. Not going crazy, but we're casting everything if we hit lands, which is the important part. Blue, red, hatching plans. Yeah, a pretty bad deal to spider food that, so let's not... Man, they've always just had the up three cards guard advantage in all these games too, which is gross. With the hatching plans. Alright, let's get uh, counterspelled or burned or whatever. Gotta put something on the board. No response. Yet. Now they... Diminisher Witch bargain? Sure. Pretty gross. Archivist. Hmm. <laughs> we probably just cast Archivist. Have nothing to really do with it, but it gets them to spend burn. And I don't really want to spend removal on their 3-2. I don't really want to spider food the cursed roll and have a three toughness creature just run into a diminisher witch anyway. The Archivist. Biggest reason to play Spider Food on the Cursed Roll here would just be to get a food token for Hamlet Glutton, but I can just play Scream Puff if I hit land 5 anyway. Royal Treatment. Actually incredible with Archivist. So now I Spider Food and just hold up a Royal Treatment here? Just trade off into Witch? I don't think I want to trade into Witch, but if I Spider Food, I make the Archivist bigger too, so. Save the Werefox. Buff the Archivist. This is really awkward if they try to burn Werefox, but then they're not trying to burn Archivist, so. But if they try to burn Werefox, if I Royal Treatment it, then the roll falls off and Spider Food doesn't resolve. And if I don't Royal Treatment, then Werefox dies and Spider Food doesn't resolve. They're chill with it. Bigger Archivist it is. I'm going to guess if Werefox clears out the Witch, we hit them a bit and Archivist can get attacks in later, but... I think we're passing still. Quick study, draw two. Picklock Pranksters, very okay. No bitter blossom. Pick up a stone splitter bolt though. <laughs> it's kind of gross. Got the royal treatment up. Do they have the double burn for it, though? Or burn plus counter. They've got the mana. Cursed roll onto the Werefox. I mean, we allow that. 
we know they have a stone splitter bolt, so. Alright, very smart lines from opponent, not going for kills on Archivist here. Um, I think land 5 is important enough to maybe just Royal Treatment the Archivist just to draw the card, try to find it. But then they can bolt it next turn. And now let's just draw it and hold up Taken by Nightmares Royal Treatment. No Scry right now. Just pass. Taken by Nightmares Royal Treatment is what is getting held up here. They're just going to go for the pass. Exile Transmuter. Go for the bolt. Let's see if they have the counter as well. All right. Bolt plus counter, but they could have done this last time too. Yep. I guess they didn't have the bargain to do that last turn. All right, cool. Now we don't have to worry about saving our thing anymore. We just play a glutton while they're tapped out. Get a cursed roll onto that bad boy. Yep. Oh my god. This is ridiculous. The amount of cursed rolls they have access to. There's a screen puff. Bounce that, go for the counter on it. We're just going to get Bitter Blossom three games in a row. Alright, one land away from dealing with the Archive Dragon. And what an incredible matchup for our opponent, by the way. If we were just like red-white aggro, this is the dream matchup. Just a bunch of two-power aggro creatures to get through the witches. But our finishers are a bunch of big green dorks that really are quite soft to curse rolls. So a massive stack of diminisher witches just go to town against our deck. They have two dragons? Ugh. So close, but literally one game off is how it's going to be for day two draft two. Hmm. Just trade one witch into were fox and witch thief into scream puff, and I'm left with a two three against a two four and four six flyer dying in two swings, three swings. But yeah, we don't have good attacks. 
just locked out of the game here. Man. It doesn't really do anything. Creatures are already not blocking. Where's the button? Right there. Ah, disappointing way to end it. Get Bitter Blossomed thrice. Feels like game two was the only thing that maybe could have went differently if I didn't misclick. Two things that could have changed the course of the game. If we had thrown the food at their face and if we had shot the Bitter Blossom. But still not unhappy with how I played it out because they did end the game with like one life in the end, one or two. And uh, they would have even if they bargained the Bitter Blossom away. At, uh, at some point if we had shot them with the food, so I think the idea of getting the 6-7 down trying to kill them like one swing was reasonable because we had not seen like 15 copies of Diminisher Witch Game 1. Maybe we did, but I didn't remember it. So I think it was reasonable to take that line with the information we had there. Maybe at worst it's like a uh, 40 to 60 line where... 40% of the time my line plays better, but 60% of the time the other line of just blowing up Bitter Blossom is better. But yeah. Ah, it sucks to get literally one game away. And have a pretty bad misclick in the final round. But again, they had ways to bargain away the Bitter Blossom to not die, so with our choice of not blowing up the Bitter Blossom, we would have lost that game regardless. Perhaps that was the one pivotal choice there, of just blowing up the Bitter Blossom while they didn't have counter mana up. Trying to win from then on. But then they'd be at a much higher life total throughout that game. I don't think we really had several uh, good attacks because of the curse roll that they had gotten down that next turn. I mean, it really would have changed. Obviously, I don't have a photographic memory. I need to look back at the game, but hindsight definitely would have been better to blow up the Bitter Blossom. Don't know if it leads to a victory. But, uh, of course, hindsight does not mean that it was definitely the better line with the information we had at the time. But it probably was, at least a little bit. Well, still a pretty impressive run. Still got to play a lot of high-stakes magic. I think I'm very happy with how I drafted. I think we ended up with some really reasonable decks in these draft pods and couldn't have had anything much more powerful. We found some incredibly tight plays for some of the victories, like game one of the final round. Overall, I think I'm reasonably pleased with how well I drafted and played in the event. I think we did most of what we could have done at almost all points in the event. Just fall a tiny bit short of the 500 bucks in the end. But we are still up in gems, which is already a very difficult feat in an arena open event, considering day one costs 5,000 gems to enter and basically gives you nothing back the vast majority of the time. So we will take those gems, go up to 55k in the account, very, very solid win rate in terms of wins versus losses throughout the Wilds of Eldraine and Lord of the Rings draft formats. And I think I'm up like... 200 or not 200 i think i'm up like 20,000 gems at this point because the last time i bought any gems i i bought them to get up to like 20,000, and then it's just kept rising over time as i play a bunch of drafts and arena opens and stuff and we're all the way up to 55,000 gems so we are just firmly firmly in the money on arena over time going infinite feels great even if we don't get the straight cash prizes we still get to play Arena pretty much infinitely for free. So that's going to do it for us. 15,000 gems, one game away, not even a full round away from getting cash prizes. Brutal way to end it, but still an excellent record overall for the events. We certainly take those.
But that's going to end today's video. As always, I'd like to thank my patrons and YouTube members for their support, as well as you for watching the video. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see some more like it, you can always like, comment, and subscribe to tell the YouTube algorithm to send you some more in your recommended feed. If you'd like to catch me live, you can check out the Twitch channel in the link in the description below. And if you'd like to support the channel directly, you can check out the Patreon link in the description below. But other than that, as always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you again soon for some more Magic Arena.